Hello, I am back making Jurassic World Evolution 2 videos, specifically for the Chaos Theory modes, because as you'll remember, I did promise that I was going to do all of them. So don't you worry, I haven't forgotten. But it has been a long time since I last posted, I think about 8 months, and the last video I did post was the Jurassic Park Chaos Theory mode, which, from what I recall, was very buggy, there were things like the Velociraptors not coming out of the hatchery, or any dinosaur not coming out of the hatchery, they were just teleporting into view. Then you had these really freaky bugs where like dinosaurs that were being airlifted would contort and twist and stretch in the most horrific of ways. And so I just think it's going to be a much more enjoyable experience now recording these and putting them on the channel than it was back then. And not just in terms of for me, but also for the video itself, you know, there won't be ridiculous things going on. I'll be able to properly explain how to do it or at least how I did it. Now that there are all of these quality life changes and there's no more stupid bugs or anything like that. But it's been a while since I've posted because I've been moving home and, you know, it's very stressful. You've got a lot of packing to do. There's solicitors not doing the job properly. It just takes a toll on a man. And yeah, it would have just been way too difficult for me to record or edit or do anything like that because... I couldn't even do normal things really. Yeah, all my stuff was packed in bags for months. Um, so yeah, it just would have been impossible. But yeah, having said all that, I'm just looking forward to making some more videos and getting back to it. So let's get into the video. Eight months off the job. It's been a long time since I've done this. Will I be able to cope with life? We'll see. So the first thing that I did when I started this mode was to strip out all of the existing structures. Um, you can't move the arrival point and you can't move the amphitheater, but everything else can be deleted or moved. Now, you're not gonna wanna delete your viewing gallery. You're not gonna wanna delete the sort of control center and I think there's a science center because they're pretty important and you are gonna be using them uh, very soon. So it's just wasted money because you just have to build them again. But all of the paths and all of the fences, I, I always delete them, especially in this particular mode on this particular map. And the reason being is that, one, you get to meet your park however you want then, so it creates good replay value for you because it'll be different each time that you rebuild it. And number two is that it gives you the ability to sort of construct your own space. I think when you're using the same space that the developers left for you, it might not work for you. And so I just think it's better to strip all of it out and sort of build the paths and buildings and exhibits however you want to build them. So I went away and I did all of that. And that took quite some time. But once it was done, this is what the park looked like. So it doesn't look like much right now, but I have planned out quite a few things and I've sort of got the general layout of the park down. So we've got a couple of gardens at either side of the arrival point and they're just for aesthetic purposes. There is the command center directly facing the arrival point, which is mainly just so it looks like the visitor center from Jurassic Park kind of thing for guests to look at. We've got a couple of exhibits where the Pachycephalosaurus and Compsognathus will be going. The general path in has sort of been planned out, so I've got paths down to the left of the island where all of the sort of facilities and um, infrastructure will be. We've got pathing down to the amphitheatre for the T-Rexes. We've got pathing around the backs of the exhibits, ready for anything else that we need to put in, like other exhibits or, or uh, amenities, etc, etc. But for now, the main priority is just getting in these new dinosaurs, because as you'll know in this mode, you get the Pachycephalosaurus and the Compsognathus and then the T-Rex delivered almost immediately. So we just need to get those in, get them happy, and then once they're in, we can, we can open the park and start making some money. There really wasn't anything to show with the Compies and Pachycephalosaurus, because they took minimal editing to get to 100% comfort. Um, and I think that sort of reinforces what I was talking about before, where 
I've built new exhibits for them instead of using those pre-existing spaces. They're completely happy. It's more than enough space for them and therefore I haven't wasted space for other dinosaurs or guest facilities etc etc. So it really I think it is better to just build the park in your own image rather than going what the going with what the developers left for you. So because of this I turned my attention to the T-Rexes instead and uh, yeah they weren't too bad either, you know just a little bit of sand here, a little bit of water there, uh, I added a viewing gallery on the side so people can see in and some like decorative foliage and stuff and then they were just all good which is brilliant. This in turn meant that I could then focus on the amenities and guest facilities so things like food, drink, shopping, attractions, restrooms, emergency bunkers, all that stuff because none of it had been built yet but the park was just about to open and the thing is with amenities on Jurassic World Evolution 2 is that they're just so much more important than they were on the original game you know they do give you profit and guest comfort on the original but on this one they just seem to impact your star rating so much more and I think this is purely down to this sort of formula that they've developed for this game where dinosaurs are really important still, you know, they drive up the amount of guests and the amount of tickets that you sell. But then it's like, what do those guests spend their money on when they're in your park? Well, they spend it on food, drink and shopping. And if you've got a happy guest or you've got a park full of happy guests and you've got a park full of dinosaurs, so there's lots of those guests, then there'll be lots of them spending their money. And when they spend all of that money on the amenities, it really drives your income up, which allows you to get more dinosaurs, it allows you to do more research, it allows your star rating to go up, because the star rating is no longer based on, you know, just dinosaur appeal, it's based on your actual income. So really, it's everything working in tandem uh, in this perfect sort of formula that you've got to get right in order to hit that five star mark, which I think is a much better system this time around. But anyway, yeah, that's my facility set up and all ready to go. And now we can finally open San Diego. Jurassic Park, San Diego. Isn't it something? Oh, it's something all right. A living illusion. The next set of objectives really only focus on boosting your profit from amenities and your guest comfort, so all I had to do was place down some hotels because all of my amenities were already built and gaining profit. And this meant that I was very quickly onto the next set of objectives, which require you to build two exhibits, one for the Parasaurolophus and one for the Mementosaurus. The Parasaurolophus I got spot on. It was uh, not, not hard to get them to 100% comfort, it was just some water and some ground nut, but I got them in this like perfect level where if anything had been more or anything had been less, they would have been upset, so it was just like actually perfect based on what I'd already built. But the Mementosaurus I just got completely wrong. Um, th there was like a long thin area down the sort of path that leads to the power station from the entrance and I'd planned that as the, being their area but it, by the time I placed down all the forest and, and everything they needed there was just you could tell they were not going to fit. And so I had to place them in a new exhibit over by the amphitheatre like behind the Compsognathus I think. And that worked out really well, they were comfortable in there, they had enough space, uh, there's room for a park tour, and there's probably room for more herbivores in there, so I might put something else in there as well. But it's just a heads up to you guys, like if you're doing this, if you're watching this video like in preparation for doing it yourself, uh, leave a lot of room for the Mementosaurs. And I suppose in a way that kind of factors into what I was talking about before. You know, if you've got rid of those pre-existing structures and you've built the park to your own design, you've probably got a little bit more room to play around with and that will help you massively when it comes to housing the Mementosaur because you're going to have all this a wide open space that you haven't used before you've even extended the park and it should quite easily fit in then. So the next set of objectives are around increasing your dinosaur species and your income slash profit uh, and at this point I realised I didn't have an expedition centre because obviously we've been gifted every single dinosaur from sauna so far so what I did was I built the expedition centre 
I sent them out to get some Struthiomimus DNA. And then in the meantime, I sort of did little bits around the park to sort of bring everything up to speed. You know, I built a hatchery in preparation for the Struthiomimus. I upgraded our scientists. I changed our small amenities to medium amenities. I did some research. I built another power station. All just things that I know you can be doing in the background so that when the next set of objectives rolls around, you're prepared for them. And it worked out pretty well, you know, I, I even had time to build a little Jurassic Park gate as a little bit of decoration. Funnily enough, that was a literal calm before the storm moment, because immediately after that, uh, a sandstorm hit. And I was dreading it because it was the first one that I'd had all play through, but they are really not that bad. Um, I'd forgotten, you know, what they were like. Your fences don't tend to break, at least in my experience. Um, dinosaurs only get a little bit injured, it's usually like surface wounds that can be healed. Your guests don't really care, and it's more just a blip than anything. It's like a minute of your facilities not being available because the power on them's rebooting, but that's about it. But do you know what? I wouldn't have cared if the storm was bad anyway, because at this point I had my eye on something far better, which was the Velociraptors. I'd set up an enclosure for them around the hatchery, but like next to the Parasaurolophus, and all I had to do was wait for the extraction to be complete from the DNA. And so I thought I would just take a moment to appreciate the park that I'd built so far, uh, because I didn't really do that last video, and with it all being lit up and at night, and you can see the amphitheatre in the background, the gardens I've built, the exhibits, like I just think it looks really good, especially from these shots. Um, it won't be the first time I do it in this video, and it won't be the last, but at the same time, you know, it's, sometimes it's just nice in these Chaos Theory modes. You're constantly doing things to just take a step back and go, look at what I've built so far, like this looks really nice. And especially considering that a lot of the decorative sort of foliage and stuff like that in this mode, for the desert biomes, I should say, isn't really that decorative. You know, you can't cover the fences because it's not tall trees. It, a lot of it is sort of along the ground, it's surface level, you know, like cacti or shrubs. So I guess I'm just really happy with how it looks so far, especially considering that it's not finished and we've got a lot more to do. One of the objectives I completed in this sort of downtime was to expand the park boundary, and that opened up a whole new set of objectives for me to pursue, including having different kinds of guests in the park, and one of these was adventure guests. Now they fall under things like park tours and dinosaur infamy, so I put a couple of park tours in, uh, one in the Mementosaur exhibit, and then one in the exhibit where the Velociraptors are going to be. And that just helped to fulfil that objective, but also get my guests a little bit happier and a little bit more varied, etc, etc. The main thing I was doing now was, like I said, just waiting for the Velociraptors to be ready, because there's a lot of extracting DNA and expedition time going on. And so one of the things that I would quite regularly do is check up on the T-Rexes, because the T-Rex's lifespan goes to about 66 in this mode. So if you take too long to complete the mode, they'll actually die and you'll have to get new ones, which is very expensive and you might not have chance to do. So my sort of gauge on time was always to check their lifespan, because of the dinosaurs you receive from Sauna, they're usually the first to go. So it just helps to keep an eye on them, make sure that their lifespan isn't getting too near the end, and you know you're in a good position then. Plus it's just pretty cool to have a look at your T-Rexes every once in a while. One of the other things I was doing was sending out Triceratops expeditions because I'd already got all of my Velociraptor fossils and they were just extracting, and they were going to go in the old Mementosaur exhibit. Um, just as a side note, I'm so happy with the quality of life change that you can now just sell minerals, you don't have to like extract them first and then sell them. I used to hate that when the game first started, but they've made it more like the original Jurassic World Evolution where you just sell them now for profit. And then finally, I got to witness Velociraptors exiting the hatchery as a pack instead of teleporting into view like they did in my... Jurassic Park Chaos Theory video, because as you'll remember back then it was bugged, and I, I can't wait to see the raptors emerge from the incubation centre as a pack, and oh, oh, they're bugged, so we don't get to see that, but now it's fixed and they look amazing, so I was really happy with this. 
and they were really happy with their enclosure, so that worked out perfectly. I don't think they liked the tour cars too much, uh, but other than that, win-win. So all I had to do was decorate their enclosure a little bit, and then I could box those off. Who would have thought the Velociraptors would have been like one of the easier ones to get right? So right after this, something really interesting happened and quite funny actually as well. Remember at the start of the video how I said I was looking forward to doing a video without any bugs, you know, having an experience where there were no bugs or glitches. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I found one and it was quite a big one actually and it affected me a few times after this initial mistake. So. I got this notification that said dinosaur threat on the screen and I'm thinking what's broke out something's something's happened but I don't know what because all of my dinosaurs were comfortable and it's in the Mementosaur exhibit because I put Struthiomimus in there as well now and there's one just roaming the streets so I pause the game I go to have a look around the exhibit to see where it had got out because I'm thinking Struthiomimus don't usually break out anyway you know they're very easy to manage why would only one of them break out? Why are the rest not a threat? Just doesn't make sense, right? And it's just sort of pops outside of the exhibit. So similar to how the hatchery had that like teleporting, we've now got a bug where they just teleport outside their exhibits. And this would pop up again, and I will show you that when it does happen because it was much worse the second time round. But I just wanted to point it out and see if anybody else has had this experience because I was just like, what? <laughs> Anyway, the next thing that I did was get the Triceratops ready. So I just put them in the old Mementosaur exhibit that you've already seen. Uh, all they needed really was just some ground fibre because there was already water in there. There was definitely enough space. And that was great because it meant that I hit the 8 out of 8 dinosaur species requirement. But for some reason I hadn't hit the 3 star park requirement. And I believe that was because I probably wasn't selling enough tickets still. But I was also light on amenities. I don't think I had many buildings and things like that at this point. And so I had a plan to get a new dinosaur and some more amenities. So the dinosaur that I picked was the Dilophosaurus because you can get quite a lot of them in an exhibit and you know they've got a decent rating, they're a carnivore. So I put 12 of them in an exhibit across from the Mementosaur but also next to the T-Rex and then I placed some amenities all over the park, you know, just in various spots where, you know, maybe they was lacking in food or drink or shopping, where they had a high projected number of guests, and that really boosted the income so that I could get to the three-star rating. And just as a further note, the Dilophosaurus is actually really great. I probably should have put it in earlier than what I have done because you can get a lot of them in one exhibit, like I said, but they're also quite cheap and they've got a good rating to them. So I just think they're like a really good one to get in there. I went with the Velociraptors instead, which do have a good rating and they're a really good dinosaur, but they're just so expensive compared to the Dilophosaurus. So if you are starting off, maybe you want to put that in earlier as opposed to later like I did. So because of the work that I'd done with the Dilophosaurus and the amenities, I was able to expand the park boundary once more and progress to the next set of objectives. This is a really expensive task at $6 million, which was the majority of my money. But I think it's better to just complete this now rather than wait any longer because there's not much left to do in the mode anyway. And it's at this point that while that was researching, you'll be able to see the next bug happen. I know we're right after the last one, like literally not much time in between them at all. But yeah, you can see on the screen a Compsognathus uh, breaks out of its exhibit somehow, but no fences are broken, all of the rest of them are contained, and so the same glitch has happened again. And it was worse this time because I was just getting in a rhythm with my like star rating and my guests and things like that. And then the Compsognathus broke out and it takes so long for the capture team to capture it because it's such a small dinosaur that they just couldn't hit it. So I'll let you watch this hilarity ensue. Fast as fuck, boy. I don't think you have any idea how fast I really am. How fast as fuck, boy. 
so with that issue rectified, I could now move on to actually focusing on the next set of objectives, which were to increase the dinosaur species to 10, which wasn't too difficult, and raise the park rating to 4 stars. Now, it was currently at 1 just because the Compsognathus had escaped, but I soon found out that I had quite a bit to do in order to get the park to 4 stars, so what I decided to do was incubate a couple of Carnotaurus, and I built them a nice little exhibit down the far side of the park near the Mementisaurus and Dilophosaurus. And I sort of decorated foliage around it so the park looked complete then because I knew this was probably going to be my last dinosaur. Then while I was waiting for those to incubate I did some odd bits around the park like building some more guest facilities, using the foliage to decorate around the park so that it looked nice, checking the T-Rex's lifespan and they were about halfway so I knew I was definitely going to finish the mode before they died, and curing any outbreaks of disease that happened to occur along the way. And then finally I got my Carnotaurus in their exhibit, they were completely content from the off because I'd already placed the sand etc and I'd hit that objective of having 10 dinosaur species in the park but I needed to complete the 4 star rating and I knew at this point that the only thing that was holding me back was that I didn't have enough guest facilities or I didn't have enough of the right kind to hit that mark. And sure enough when I looked at the data I needed 120,000 or so more income per minute but I also had some issues with guest comfort. So the first thing I did was place down another hotel to get my accommodation rating back up to 100% then I placed down some wider pathing, I just replaced all of my existing ones all over the park. And then finally I researched the large amenities and I placed a couple more of those down just in various spots in the park where they had a lot of projected guests. And it turned out that this was what tipped it over the edge because as you can already see on the screen right now, the food uh, amenity alone was already generating about 60,000 income per minute, like extra. And then another shopping was about another 30. I think the drinks came up to like 30 to 40 and that was what tipped it over the edge and got me the 4 star rating and as you know in this mode when you hit the 4 star rating and you complete those objectives you complete the challenge. And so that'll be all from me today. I hope you enjoyed the video and it was worth the 8 month long wait and I'll see you in the next one whatever that may be. This is the Fossil Fool signing out.